go. Great. Okay. Um, before I introduce the speaker, we, while we have the community statement up, I just want to remind everyone of our core statements. We're all learning. Everyone has something to contribute and no one has all the answers. And with that, I'm happy to introduce Xin Chai Liao um, to speak. Take it away, Xin Chai. And Xin Chai, I think you're muted. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Yeah. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, present my works here. And today, uh, well, my topic is about Stanbridge codes and showering of the permitohedra variety and, and their extensions. Yeah. So first, let's first talk about permitohedron. So it is a uh, permitohedron is a polytope uh, obtained from taking the convex code of all the permutations. You view them as uh, the coordinates in Rn. You take the convex code, the polytope you get is the permitohedron. So for example, this is when n equal to three, the hexagon here is the permutohedron when n equal to three, all the vertices are these permutations of length three. And so the main character we care about in this talk, well, first of the main character is the permutohedral variety. Well, so this is, uh, is the toric variety associated to the normal fan uh, sigma n of these permutohedron. And we denote it as x sigma n. So you can see on the right hand side, the normal fan is just the fan uh, coming from looking at these braid arrangement, the braid arrangement, the, the fan, uh, the, the comb coming from this braid arrangement is exactly the normal fan in this case. And uh, a well known fact is that the uh, Panka ray polynomial of the permutohedral variety. Uh, is something we call the Eulerian polynomial, a n of t, and this is the generating function of the distribution of number of exceedance over the uh, over the symmetric group. And so this cohomology it actually carries a representation of S n, which is induced from the S n action acting on these uh, permuting these normal fan. And Stanley in 1989, he calculated this uh, representation, it's Frobenius characteristic. So it's a symmetric function corresponding to the representation of Sn. So he calculated these things and showed that these uh, representations actually a permutation representation. So it means that your permutation, sorry, that your representation of Sn actually permuting uh, something that induces the whole asset module. Yeah. And on the other hand, so Stanbridge, he in 1992, he defined some combinatorial object called a uh, code. So uh, a code is just a sequence of uh, over non-negative uh, integers such that if we say M of alpha, this is the maximum number appearing in your sequence. Then for any numbers between one, two to M alpha, this Sorry, for any number between one, two, two, and alpha, this number will occur at least twice in the sequence. And also there is a mark assigned to the ith occurrence of your number for some unique i greater or equal to two. So for example, this is an example of a code. You can see we have m of alpha here is just a three, largest number is three. And each number from one, two, and three, there's at least two occurrence of these numbers. And there's a mark given for each one and two and three. So, and we usually denote the code as a pair alpha and f where uh, alpha is just a sequence and f 
So it's a function su such that for any f of j, j is the number appearing in the sequence. f of j is the number of uh, j's in front of the marked j. So for example, in this code, uh, you can see in front of the mark two, there's just one two, oh, sorry, maybe start from one in front of the mark one, there is two one, so f of one is equal to two. And it, there is one uh, two in front of the mark two, so f of two is one, and similarly f of three is one. And so uh, these are, are so f kind of, uh, you can record the positions of your mark. And once we have this, we can define what we call the index of a code, which is just you are summing all these f values up from one up to this n, largest number m alpha. So in the example, this example, the index is just uh, two plus one plus one, which is four. And the following, these are just all the codes of then three. So you can see there are six of them. And if you look at the corresponding index, the distribution are exactly one, four, and one, which is uh, actually the Olaren number, Olaren distribution. So uh, now if we let a uh, code and J, this be the set of codes of length N with index J, so we can consider an as an action on this code by just permuting the sequence part of the code and that these F and change. And so this will make uh, these linear span of the code as a permutation representation of the symmetric group. And Stanbridge, so he, he compute so he used Stanley's formula for the uh, for being this character of the cohomology of stable of the permutohedral variety. So the symmetric function Stanley got. So Stan Stanbridge compute the forbidden characteristic and also show and show that uh actually the representation of these on this linear span of a code is actually isomorphic to the representation of uh SN on the cohomology of permutohedral variety. Yeah. So now we know that permutohedral variety is a permutation representation and the isomorphic to code. So he asked that, can we find a permutation basis for the homology that induce the representation? And like naturally you will think that these representation, sorry, this permutation basis should have similar structure as the code. And so uh, the first goal in, in this talk is to just answer this question. And before that, uh, so actually these, the Stanbridge question, Stanbridge's uh, question actually related to some other open question. So the the permutohedral variety actually is a special case of something called the regular semi-simple Hasenberg variety. And uh, there is a famous conjecture called the Stanley Stanbridge conjecture related to chromatic symmetry function. And it turns out that uh, answer is Stanbridge's question. So keep finding a permutation basis for the permutohedral variety will give a solution to the special case of Stanley Stanbridge conjecture. Yeah, and in our work, we will give an explicit uh, permutation basis in terms of uh, showering of the permutohedral variety. And we can uh, explicitly see how these permutation acting on the basis. So uh, first we will use these following theorem by Stanilov and Stanbridge to identify cohomology as uh, Chow ring. And basically it says that, okay, so if you have a polytope P, it's simple and lattice polytope uh, and it's with no normal fan sigma P, then uh, and this K delta P, this is just the, Stanley Reisner ring of the dual of your the Stanley Reisner ring of the boundary complex of your dual polytope, then uh, your cohomology of the toric variety associated to these uh, normal fan is actually isomorphic to Stanley Reisner ring of this boundary complex of your dual polytope, and you modding out some linear general linear form. 
And this linear form uh, encode the information like how you embedded your polytope in the space. Yeah. Yep. And, and furthermore, if you have a group action G acting on your normal fan simply, surely, and freely, so this isomorphism actually becomes a KG module isomorphism. So uh, we can use these, we can kind of uh, identify this cohomology ring as this uh, polynomial ring modding out some linear form. And the right hand side is also called the child ring of the Tori variety X sigma P. Yeah. And uh, another thing we would need to need is uh, actually Fashioner in Zlinski's theory on child ring of atomic lattice. So they define something called the child ring, so DLG of an atomic lattice with respect to some subs, some set called the building set, G. And uh, so what is the building set? Um, so basically a subset G contain, a subset G of L removes uh, the zero hat. This is the minimal element in your, in your whole set, in your lattice. So G remove, G, a subset G of L removes zero hat is a building set. If that, uh, in the sense that every element that is inside your lattice, but not the minimal one, any element inside your lattice, the order ideal of these generated by this element can be uh, built from the order ideal of some elements in your building set. Uh, in the sense that your order ideal is actually isomorphic to a direct product of some order ideal of the elements in the building set. And these elements are uh, in the building set are just those maximal elements in the building set that is less than or equal to your X. Yeah, so we can just see an example for it. So when, in this case, L uh, is the Boolean lattice B3. So it's the post set formed by all the subset of one, two, three. So that's the Boolean lattice of B3. And this G, one, two, three, two, three, and one, two, three. So I, I kind of ignore the curly bracket. So this is a building set because if we just look at, so it's this circle, red circle part is the building set because we can pick any, say, one, two element, one, two. The order ideal of one, two is just these uh, kind of square things here. And if we look at the maximum, maximal element in your building set that is less than one, two, which is just one and two, then you can see the order ideal of one, two is just the direct product of one, order ideal of one, and order ideal of two. And so you have these things. So and it actually holds for any element you can pick. So one, three is similar. And if you pick some elements any in, inside your building set, like two, three, then the order ideal two, three is just built by itself. So yeah, so so that's why the okay, this G is a building set. And so you can see from this example that actually we can always pick uh L remove this zero had to be a building set because uh in this case, pick any element in the in lattice, it will just be built by itself. By the element itself. Yeah. So we always have this thing, the maximal building set L remove zero hat. Yeah, so basically you just need to know, okay, there is a success that satisfies some condition of the building set. And once you have a building set, uh, you can construct some simplicial complex in the following way. So given you a building set G of L, we say a subset N of G is nested if that if any pairwise incomparable elements uh, in your N, uh, they're joined is not inside the building set. Yeah. So if we have any incomparable element, their joint is not inside the building set, then this subset N is called a nested set. And uh, you can see that any, for a nested set, any subset of nested set is also nested. So actually this tells you that this nested set, if you collect all of them, they form an abstract simplicial complex which we denote as NLG, which we, and it's called the nasty set complex of your 
uh, with respect to your building set. And furthermore, if your your building set has a maximal element one, then uh, the nest is that complex is actually a cone with apex one hat. Oh, this is the maximal element, yeah. So with a cone with these maximal elements, the apex. And uh, we will call the base of the cone to be the reduced nested set complex. And the, this was denoted as N tilde LG. So for example, we use the same building set. This is a building set. And then it turns out these will be the nested set complex. So you can see that, uh, so, mm, for example, one, two, uh, one, two, one, two, three is a one, two, one, two, three. These face corresponding to a nested set because, uh, okay, one and two, they're okay. This is one, two, one, two, three is, is this nested set, and one and two, they are incomparable to each other. So they're joined inside the building lattice is just one, two subset, but it is not in the building set. Yeah. So, so, you can just check all of them and you will see, okay, this one, two, one, two, three is a building set, but one, two, and two, three. So there is no phase between one, two, and two, three. So this is not a building set. And you can see because, okay, one, two, and two, three, one, and two, three, they are incomparable in the building lattice, but their join is the one, two, three set, the whole set, which is inside the building set. So it's not one, two, two, three is not the nest set. Yeah, so, well, yeah. So in this case, these will be a nested set complex. And you can see one, two, three is the maximal element. So it forms a cone and the base is just this part. This is the reduced nested set complex. Okay. And uh, yeah, so basically now you just need to know, given your building set, you can associate it with a simplicial complex called the nested set complex. And in particular, if your building set is the largest one, L remove this zero hat, then it turns out that, uh, so your building set contains almost everything. That means that any, uh, any if you have any incomparable element in your building, in your, in your nest, in your set, their join will always be inside this maximal building set. So that means if you have a nested set, it have, you can't, you cannot have incomparable element in it. So any nested set in this case are a ch are chain in L remove zero hat. So the nested set complex is actually the order complex of L remove zero hat. And in this case, the reduced nested set complex just the order complex of L remove zero hat and one hat. Yeah. So these generalize these nested set complex generalize the uh, classical this construction of order complex. So once we have this uh, building set and nasty set, we can talk define what is called uh, the showering of atomic lattice. So here, this A L, this is the set of atoms in your uh, atomic lattice. G is a building set. Then the showering of uh, L with respect to this to G is defined in this way. It's a polynomial ring indexed by variable indexed by building set. And you can see the, the idea you model now here is the uh, formed by those uh, subset that does not form a face in your nested set complex. So you kind of, you, you model those down face in your nested set complex. And so the numerator here is actually the Stanley Reisner ring of the nested set complex. And then you modding out these linear form, general linear form. So it's kind of similar to uh, the Danilov Stanbridge conjecture uh, theorem that expression. Yeah. But okay, the point here is that we, we don't really need to remember these uh, the formula, but the point here is that Fatner Zvinsky, they actually they define this child ring, but and they also found a basis for this child ring, which looked like this. Yeah. And uh, so we will we actually have a basis. And now let's go back to these uh, permitohedron case. So we need first we need the fact that the order complex of this Boolean lattice remove uh, the empty set at the top top set, 
the order complex is actually the boundary complex of the dual of the permittohedron. And we kind of mentioned that these found these order complex exactly the nasty set complex of the maximal building set, the reduced nasty set complex. So by Dan and Love and Stanbridge's theorem, this tells us that okay, the charring of these BN with respect to the maximal building set, uh, you can kind of express this in terms of this fraction. So it is actually the same as the charring of the permittohedral variety and can be identified as the cohomology of this permittohedron. Yeah. And, and this ring is also known as the charring of the Boolean matroid. And so in this case, this we have this fashioner Zinsky basis court in this case, in terms of will be have this kind of expression. So it will be a monomial, uh, monomial basis indexed by these a chain inside your lattice of oh, sorry, inside a inside your lattice. And it's each X X XFI, the exponent AI satisfies some restriction. So when n equal to three, this is the possible uh basis element. You have six of them. And you can also see that there is a natural SN action. So you can act using S3 acting on this thing by permuting the index. So this actually forms a representation of Sn. And our theorem is, so we construct a bijection from these bases we just saw and the Stanbridge codes, the codes that Stanbridge defined, and this bijection will respect the SN action and it takes the degree of the monomial to the index of this image. And let's just see an example. So, so this uh this element is a uh, element. So this turns the element in the basis of when n equal to eight, and the code corresponding to it can be obtained the following way. So first, look at the first term x one three. So uh, the first term is one three. So we just put one in position one and three. And then the degree here is one, so we put the mark here, so the f of one is one. And then for the second term, you add two and five in, in the original set. So you put two in position, second position and the fifth position. And degree, so degree here, exponent is one, so we put a mark here, so that f of two is one. And now then for the third term, you add four, six, and eight, so you put three in positions four, six, and eight. And now the degree is two. So you put the mark here so that there are f of three is equal to two. And once you go through these things, uh, you have a blank, you still have blanks, then you can just put it zero. And then what you obtain is a code. Yeah. So it's kind of a very natural uh, bijection. And so these are uh, the codes, the, Correspondence between codes and the basis when n equal to three. And that's so uh then we know that okay, so the uh the S and action on these bases actually forms the same representation uh of S and on codes and also on the cohomology of the permittohedral variety. So these bases are exactly what we want. And okay, so that's the permittohedral part, but actually there is an extension of the story, uh, which start with something called the binomial Olarian polynomial. And you can kind of see that it's defined using Olarian polynomial and binomial coefficient, we denote it as A and tilde T. And Posnikov, Reiner, and Williams in 2008, they kind of sh they show that, okay, these Olarian polynomial is actually also the Pankori polynomial of some topic variety associated to the normal fan of a polytope called the stellohedron. And so we just call it stellohedral variety. And so this is on the right hand side, you can see this is a case of it's, it's a stellohedron when n equal to three. And you can see it's kind of like an extension of a permittohedron. So you look at the look at the face in the middle, this actually forms a permittohedron. Yeah. And Shirashwan and Wax in 2020 they showed that uh, well, they introduce a symmetric function analog of these uh, above a binomial Larian polynomial, which is defined uh, as the following. So it's Q1 tilde XT, 
and uh, it defined like this way, where this QK is the great, actually the great bit Frobenius series of the cohomology of the permutohedral variety. And they also show that these uh, great bit Frobenius of the cohomology of the stellohedral variety. So there's also an action, action acting on this stellohedral variety, their cohomology. And this representation, the Frobenius characteristic, it turns out also, well, it's, it's exactly this Q and tilde XT. And so that means that if you look at the, uh, the, the expression here, you can see these symmetry functions actually uh, edge positive symmetry function. So that means the cohomology also carries a permutation representation of SM. So we can kind of uh, ask a similar question. So in so as an analog of the codes that Stanford defined, I define something called extended codes. And basically the extended code is just a code alpha f, where now alpha instead of just uh have number zero have non-negative integers inside, you also have some infinity. And this infinity works just like zero in your Stanbridge codes. There's no restriction on how many of them or how do you, or there's also no mark. Yeah, and so the index of extended code also is defined as just the codes, except that uh, we define the index of these O infinity codes to be, this index to be minus one. So for example, this is a code, extended codes. You have an infinity here and all those are just the same. You have zero infinity. And uh, the index are just defined as before. So you're summing up all the F value. So zero does, sorry, F infinity doesn't matter. No. And we let this code and J tilde to be the set of extended codes of length n with index J. So these are just, uh, all the extended codes of when n equal to three. So we kind of separate them according to their index. So index minus one is just these all infinity ones. And these are index zero, index one and index two. And so we can similarly, we can consider an SM action on these uh, linear span of the extended codes and it will form a permutation representation of a symmetric group. So we show that if you compute the Frobenius characteristic of this linear span of ex extended codes, it is also the Q and tilde XT uh, that Sharajan and Wax define. So now we can also ask the similar things as Stanbridge did. So is there a permutation basis for the cohomology of a stellohedral variety? And uh, that basis should also have a similar combinatorial structure as the extended codes. And to this answer, uh, question, our answer, we, uh, the answer is yes. And it related to what Brendan, her, Nathan, Proudfoot, and Wong introduced in 2020, the augmented child ring of a matroid, so ATL.M. Uh, and so in particular, when your matroid M is something called a bully matroid, later we'll kind of introduce this. Uh, in this case, it turns out these ch augmented child ring of the Boolean matroid is the same as the uh, stellohedra, the charring of the stellohedra variety. So uh, Daniel of Stanbridge theorem tells us that we can identify this augmented charring of Boolean matroid to be the cohomology of the stellohedra variety. And the point here is kind of like when we're doing this uh, project, there's no basis known for the augmented charring. And so we couldn't just come up with a basis and we couldn't just uh, like, uh, so there's no basis known we need to find one. And we actually find an analog of the fashioner Zinsky basis for the augmented chowing. Uh, and in the Boolean matroid case, these basis will look, will have these following expression. So it's very similar to the basis for the chowing of Boolean, ma Boolean matroid, sorry, for the chowing case. Just that now uh, you can see only the first term, uh, A1, F1, this is has different uh, restriction. Yeah. And so when n equal to three, these are possible basis elements. And uh, you can kind of see where you can also let S3 acting on this basis. 
And so you also have an asset action on, on these uh, bases. And what we show is that, okay, we construct a bijection between these bases to the extended codes. And this bijection we will respect the asset action on both sides and it will take the degree of your monomial to the index minus one of the corresponding codes. Yeah. And so we can just see an example. So the, the, so the bijection is very similar to the code one, but now you kind of need to break it into two different cases. So, so this is so this is a uh, basis element in B when n equal to nine, and uh, we will break it into two cases according to the exponent of the first term in your basis. So, like here, when your x one for the first term has exponent one, then we will start plugging numbers starting from zero, one, two, and so on. And so here. Uh, you can see it first turns one, four, so we'll put zero in position one and four. And there's no mark here. But for the second turn, you plug in two and seven. So you plug in, we plug in one this time in position two, second position and the seventh position. And degree is one. So we put the mark here and so on, just like a code case. So this is when your exponent is one. We we started putting from zero. But when, so in this case, now the exponent, all the other are the same, just ex exponent starting from two. Then uh, in this case, we will put in numbers in starting from one. So we have first terms one, four. So we put one in first and the fourth positions in this case. And then these two, we just put the mark at the second place. Yeah. And the remaining are just kind of similar to the code case. So you, the second thing you have, uh, two and seven adding in. So you put two in the second and seventh position and so on. And in the end, if you have, you still have blank. If, if you go through all these, all these terms, you still have blank. You just put infinity inside. Yeah. So, so basically if your, if your basis element, the first term has exponent greater than one, then your, uh, your code corresponding code will not have zero. And that's the bijection. And so these will, these also, so these bijections, let's show that, uh, okay, we have, uh, uh, we have, we found, so this show that we found a basis that generates the permutation representation we want. And these also give a bijective proof for Shoranshan and Brax result that Q and tilde XT is the greatest for being a series of the cohomology of stylohedral variety. So, so that's like the basis part, but how do we really obtain this basis? So these kind of related to fachner Zinsky's package. So we, we, we already uh, mentioned this uh, fachner Zinsky theory of building set and the child ring. And usually it can, comes like a pack, package of the following. So we start with some lattice, atomic lattice, and we can talk about what is the building set of this lattice and giving you a building set. You can construct simplicial complex called the reduced nested set complex. And then you will have a corresponding child ring corresponding to these things, DLG. And we have seen that in the case your L is building lattice, building set is the maximal one. This nested set complex, it turns out is the boundary complex of the permittohedral, permittohedron. And the the child ring in this case is just the child ring of the permittohedral variety. And this actually is a special case when your, uh, this is a special case when your L, this lattice is a lattice of flats of a matroid. So it, then uh, the corresponding for the lattice of flats, so for the L be a lattice of flats of a matroid, your building set is also the maximal building set then it turns out the, the nasty stack complex is something called the Bergman complex. And then uh, the char ring is like a, what we call a char ring of a matroid. Yeah. And Brendan Ho made for Proudfoot and Bond in 2020, they introduced something called the augmented char ring with denoted as A tilde N for a matroid. And also an augmented Bergman complex. And they show that when your N is fully matroid, this augmented Bergman complex actually the boundary complex of 
the stylohedra variety, dual stylohedra variety. Yeah, so you have like trowing, this trowing also corresponding to the trowing of stylohedra variety. And on the other side, Hosnikov, Reiner, Williams, they consider um, something called a graphical building set of an N star graph. And the, so this is on the side of a graph associated hedron and the corresponding reduced nested set complex. Uh, it turns out will also be the, uh, style, the dual style hedron. So here you can see, kind of see that there's many blanks here. So what I did is kind of like just fill out, filling this blank. And it turns out that once we do that, uh, we just uh, found, we can easily found the basis, corresponding basis. So uh, we let's first just kind of uh, introduce about, just briefly introduce the what is a matroid. So a matroid um, consists of a ground set E and also a collection of subset called the independent subset. And uh, they satisfy these following conditions. The first one is say that, okay, any empty set is also independent. And any subset of an second one is any subset i of an independent set j is also independent. And the third one is kind of like the kind of like exchange axiom. Any i, I and j is independent. If the cardinality of i is less than j, then you can always find some element in uh, that is not in i but in j. And when you join it with i, it is still independent. Yeah. So uh, we, we just call the subset in here the independent subset of a matroid. And the, a multiplicating example is that you can think of your ground set E to be just a set of vectors, collection of vectors. And the independent subset here is just uh, linearly independent subsets. Yeah. And if you just look, if you look at the first and two axiom, second axiom, this says that uh, the independent collection of the independence that actually forms a simplicial complex called the independence complex. And we can also, for any subset S of these ground set E, we can also define its rank by just looking at the size of maximal independent subset. So this is just kind of uh, corresponding to dimension in linear algebra. And for any subset F, uh, F of E, so a subset f of e is a flat if if uh, if we can if for an, if we pick any element that is not inside e and a joint sorry if we pick any element not, that is not inside f and join it with f you always make your rank uh, increase then we will call uh, such an f a flat of your mate of your matroid and we denote f m to be the all the set collection of flats of a matroid. And if you look at the inclusion relation, order relation uh, between these flats, they form a lattice called the lattice of flat of M. So we denote it as um, LM. Yeah. Well, this is just an easy example for Boolean matroid. So when N equal to three, a Boolean matroid B3 has ground set one, two, three. So in this case, you can kind of think of your ground set is just three independent vectors. And so the independence uh, so you can see one, two, three will also be an independent subset. And therefore the independent uh, collection of independent set will just be all the three subsets. And similarly, the lattice of flats also all the three subsets because any, any, any vectors, you have three linearly independent vectors and any subset of vectors for itself form a space. And these are the corresponding independence complex. And this is the lattice of flat. It's just a Boolean lattice. And so once we have these uh, M lattice of flats and the dependent complex, we can define what called the augmented trial ring. So augmented trial ring is just some ring that encodes both information from uh, LM and IM. And it defines the following. So it looks complicated, but the only thing you need to know is that uh, the numerator uh, is actually a Stanley Reisner ring of some fan called the augmented Bergman fan or complex. We will see right away. And 
to define the augmented Bergman uh, fan, we need to give some definition. So for any subset I and a chain of uh, a chain in the lattice of flat L and F, we say that I is compatible with F if R, if I is contained in the minimal element in your chain. And so we, we denote it as I less than or equal to F. And in particular, uh, any, um, any independent set I is compatible with empty set. And also for a subset S of one through N set, we denote E S to be the sum of all these E I, I over all the element of E S. Then uh, the augmented Bergman fan sigma and tilde is just a simplicial fan whose cone are sigma I F, they are indexed by this compatible pair I F, I N. Uh, these and these cones are defined as the following. So when you have a compatible pair I, which is an independent set, F is a chain in your lattice of flat, then the cone just span by these vectors E I from the independent set and this minus E and the complement of F of your flat from the uh, Chain, from your chain in the lattice of flat. Yeah. So you got this will be a uh, cone course inside your Bergman fan. And the corresponding simplicial complex is what we call the augmented Bergman complex. So we will see an example later. And point here is uh, Brendan Herb, Nathan Proudfoot, and one, they show that the augmented Bergman fan for the Boolean matroid is the normal fan of the stellohedron. Yeah, so this is an example. When we're looking at Boolean matroid B2, and uh, we have independent complex, sorry, collection of dependent sets, just empty set of one, two, and one, two. And oh, it's, this is also the same as the lattice of flats. And so, okay, so this is the cone, the, the cone inside your uh, augmented Bergman fan. So now we can see, so first to, to see what a MET fan looks like, you first need to see what is the rays of these uh, fan. So those dimension one, and you can see from here, the rays are just those generated either by one single element EI or just generated by some EF. F is a, just a single singular uh, flag, singular chain, just a one set in your, one flat in your chain. So we have either uh, the, so the rays are just these thing, one or uh, or your element E2, or you will have just a single flat inside your chain. So you have two, and two, so for two, these are generated by minus E one, two, remove two. So it will be minus E one, which is this direction minus E one. So similarly, this is generated by minus E two. And then we have this empty empty chain. So it's, it's generated by E minus E one, two, which is minus E one plus E two, which is this thing. So these are all the rays. And then to see which rays form the cone, you just check if you can put the corresponding, uh, these two, so you can see, okay, you, these two rays forms a cone because this one and these two, you can put it in them together to get another compatible pair. And for this one, you have, for this one here and the single uh, one chain here, because you can put these set and this set together to get a compatible pair, so this also form a cone, and so on. So you will have, so these are kind of like your augmented uh, Bergman fin, you see. And when you use a sphere to intersect with it, you got the augmented Bergman complex. So each phase are corresponding to a compatible pair. So that's the yeah, and, and these are exactly uh, the these are exactly the boundary complex of your dual stellohedron when n equal to two. Yeah. 
So there's another construction for the steel stellohedron, which is by Posnikov, Reiner, and Williams, we just mentioned. So they consider uh, the graphical building set of these N star graph K1N. So, so you can just see an example. These are exa these are these graph are examples for K12. It just basically means that you have a star vertex and then you have two uh, branches coming out, then this will be K12. And if you have K1N, just means this star it has n branches coming out. That will be K1N. Yeah. So the graphical building set of this graph, K1N, is just all the subset of you can think of it as just a subset of vertex set whose induced subgraph on this subset is connected. So in this example, you can see these, these, these are all these uh, graphical building sets. Yeah, so you won't have one and two because one, two, they are not connected. Yeah, when you are looking at their induced subgraph. Yeah. And once you have a building set, just like we said before, you will have a corresponding reduced nested set complex. So I didn't kind of show how you get it, but it turns out it will be something look like this. So it will also be a pentagon. And these are also, and we, and of course, because this is the uh, dual stellohedron for when n equal to two. So there should be a correspondence between these graph and this one. Yeah, and so our first proposition is that we, yeah, we found this course. Well, this correspondence is quite obvious actually. And we, so we have a poset isomorphism between the phase lattice of the augmented Bergman fan uh, of Bully Metroid and the uh, reduced nested set complex, the one we just saw of the these graphical building set. And the bijection kind of looked like the following. So, so this graph corresponding to a nested set of the graphical building set. And these were corresponding to a compatible pair looked like this. And this compatible pair corresponding to a cone in your augmented Bergman fan. And how do, so you can see that, okay, you, if you have one three here, that means you have one and three. And for these subset in the chain here, uh, you will have like this subset one, so one, three, six corresponding to this one, three, six, and they also contain star. Yeah, so this is like how they are correspond. So we have this bijection and we, and we actually found that, okay, these bijection can be extended to a more general setting. It's not just works just for the matroid, for, for Boolean matroid. It actually works for any matroid. And so uh, let's see how we do it. So first we need to construct a lattice, new lattice from a matroid. So, so now M is a matroid. We have lattice of that LM independent complex IM. So uh, let's just use an example to see how we construct a new matroid. So we can consider the case uh, of uniform matroid U32. You can think of it as three general vectors lies on this uh, plane. And so the lattice of flat of uh, the U32 is just this thing, one, two, three. And then the biggest, the largest uh, space is just a plane, one, two, three. And uh, oh, here I, I will identify the independent complex by its uh, face lattice. So these are just all the independent set, their face lattice, their order by inclusion. And we form the new lattice by just putting, okay, independent set here. And we have these lattice of flat here, copy a lattice of flat. And their order relation are just as before, but uh, we define a cover relation for any independent set. So any independent set here is covered by, uh, is covered by the closure of it. So it's the smallest uh, flat in lattice of flat that contain these independent set. So you can see one, three is covered by one, two, three, because the smallest flat in here that contain one, three is just one, two, three. So we have a line here. Yeah, so we just like draw this cover relation and this forms a new post set. 
and we show that, okay, consider these new lattice, and then you consider these building set. So basically the building set in this example are just these one, two, three, and then the, the whole uh the whole lattice of flat here. So you consider this building set, then it turns out that the corresponding, so you have building set, then we can look at its nested set. Then this nested set, it turns out will have these form. So they are indexed by I, this I and this F, this, this chain of inside lattice of flat, and they form a compatible pair. So basically your nested set also in indexed by compatible pair. And so there, therefore we found that, okay, we also have a similar post isomorphism between the face lattice of this reduced nested set complex of this build, new building, new lattice and the buildings that we just choose and the face lattice of the augmented Bergman fan. And the bijection is pretty easy. Just you, you translate these set indexed by, uh, indexed by a compatible pair to a cone indexed by a compatible pair. Yeah. And so once we have these, we also can consider the child ring corresponding to this new lattice and the new building set. And so we just, okay, it turns out that writing down the definition, you do some easy ca calculation. It turns out that exactly this is equal to the augmented child ring that Brendan, Her, Mason, Proudfoot, and Wong define. Oh, and also this connection was also independently found by Chris Ewer and later included in his recent preprint with uh, her and Larson. Yeah. So in this case, we kind of uh, write uh, augmented charring as a charring of some lattice, uh, some atomic lattice, this new lattice and with a specific building set. And so therefore we can also have, we also have a fashionary Svinsky type basis for this. And it turns out, well, it has these, the fetchner Vinsky basis has this form. Yeah. And yeah. And so that's kind of how we find the basis. <laughs> Just you you kind of interpret your augmented charring, try to make them as charring. Yeah. So it turns out that, okay, the this table, we actually can fill in. Yeah. So we, we, we can kind of match up these, uh, the building set, coming from this graphical building set, graph associate hedron site with the augmented charring of Boolean lattice uh, that uh, Junho, Mason, Prof, and Wang, they define. And further, we consider, we, we show that, okay, for any augmented Bergman fan, Bergman complex and the augmented charring, they are actually just the charring of these new lattice, L tilde N, and with respect to these building server just mentioned, yeah. Oh, and one thing further uh, we, worth notice is this child, this lattice, this new lattice is actually, uh, it's not something where it's actually very natural. It's actually the lattice of that of something called the free co-extension of your main choice. Yeah, so it's uh, these things. And yeah, that's all I want to say, thank you. Thank you so much, Shinshay. Um, any questions? Um, yeah, I had a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, so the first one was, I mean, this new lattice, um, that seems very interesting. Is What else do you know about it? Like, yeah. Um, I I know there are like all the work related to this is like uh, Brendan. Uh, I think it's Tom Brendan. He has a new paper called like Olar Olarian transformation. Uh -huh. I think. So basically, it's like all is when it's some transformation on polynomial ring, I guess, when you when you plug in when you're plugging Olarian 
polynomial, it turns out will give you binomial Eulerian polynomial under this transformation. And uh, so it turns out that they, I know those the that transformation has a kind of topological construction and it's just related to these uh this new lattice, like the way we construct here. Yeah, like mm. okay. I, I mean I was just wondering like what's the Mobius number, just topological properties, things like that. Ah uh, yeah, yeah. So so you can always do um We act, we don't know it's all, all uh, it, it's Euler characteristic or something like that right now. Okay. Yeah, but I think that related to the this Eulerian transformation. I guess maybe you can get the this is just probably not correct, but it's maybe you can just get the Eulerian Euler characteristic or maybe the yeah Euler characteristic just by just doing this Eulerian transformation. Um, I did have another question, but if I don't want to, if anyone else wants to go, that's fine. <laughs> I I mean, I actually, I, I think I'll jump in on your question yeah. because uh, I also find this new lattice to be quite interesting. And apparently it doesn't have a name yet, uh, but it isn't obvious to me that this is a lattice. I mean, because it's the lattice of flats of the free coextension of M. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. But is there, just looking directly at it without understanding it through this, is there an obvious reason why this should be a lattice? Because you just kind of slapped a post set on top of another post set. I mean, they're both lattices that you put together, but... Mm. Well, it's it's sort of like a product, but I mean, some kind of product is what it looks like to me. But um, I don't know. Yeah, but it's so. I know it's like you quotient into your post set because the flats kind of quotient your independent sets in a sense. Yeah. It's like you quotient your post sets and then product it and then you know put it on top of itself. So you've like taken the product of the chain and then done some quotienting and you still ended up with a lattice which mm. I don't think is generally true that you can get away with that okay that that was that was my question and maybe there is no obvious uh reason for that but it, it is a lattice and there are ways to prove it <laughs> yeah I feel like if if you use the I mean because uh okay. I think it's kind of also related to how we define maybe how we define the cover relation, like these new cover relations. Oh, I think there might be. I think join might be pretty easy to show that basically either you have a join in the top which will work, but if you're split between two levels, you've got a really easy to define join, and so because it's finite. Like I think you can show that this is a join simulatus, a finite join simulatus mm -hmm. with a zero. Um, but okay, I can play around with this in my own time and let Sheila ask her question. Yeah. Okay. My my other question was probably is probably easier. How does it follow from I mean, how does Sharishan and Wax prove um that the binomial Eulerian symmetric function is the graded Frobenius characteristic of the stellahedron. I mean, I think I'm missing a piece. So in the ordinary Eulerian case, we already had what Richard did and what uh, John Stembridge did. And so you th they already knew that this, that symmetric function matched. Yeah. The toric variety of the Permuda hedron. Where, where's the, what am I missing here in the new case? Um, 
Yeah. So you so, mean, yeah. How do they show these things? Yes. Right. How? What's the connection there? Because they must have used. Yeah, like I think they kind of interpret. Um. So it's kind of like if you just look at these graph, these di these polytope here, you can see that you are kind of you can obtain this by just okay, you're starting from, uh, you're starting from say, uh, uh, a simplex, uh, convex call of zero 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 six six zero zero and zero six zero, and you started truncated all these, uh, faces of your. Uh, simplex by first truncating all these, uh, truncate all the, truncate all the vertex first. So you will get these face and these face, and then you truncate your your edge. Then you got this rectangle here, mm -hmm. and kind of that's how you construct these uh, stylohedron by just doing truncation, and uh, corresponding to the algebraic geometry side when you're doing this, uh truncation, you're actually build, blowing up uh, the, well, you're, you're actually blowing up the kind of like coordinate plan of your projective space, something like that. And it turns out that these formula here uh, is kind of, inter you can interpret blowing up things. Uh, you, um, you can interpret blowing out things by using these symmetric function we're looking here. It's kind of hard to, yeah. So so these symmetric function actually also describe a, like a blow up process. And this blow up is actually as an equivariant. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. I was missing something complicated. <laughs> that makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, they, their proof are exactly like just doing these blow up, ex explain these blow ups procedure her yeah right because you know i was wondering why they defined it like that in the first place i think when the first place look at these things it's kind of like you have a way to just look at these and then usually one is just H I N. See. yeah and when you have n choose m you know this is h n okay. <laughs> yeah and this is just a q n minus n or something yeah right so you can just interpret these to these yes yeah. I, I see that. Yeah, yeah, this is also how I kind of define these extended codes, like just looking at like these things and these things. <laughs> right, I see. Okay. Very interesting. That's great. Thank you. And for now, I'll stop the recording. Shinshe, you're, you don't have to stay here, but we can, let's give another round of applause. Um, Very and, nice talk. Yeah, but you can stay, you know, if we have yeah. more questions and you want to stay longer, you can.